So why? Why did it happen? One of the most important characteristics of the RBMK reactor is that it can possess a positive void coefficient. All right, and let's abbreviate that PVC. It is an increase in steam bubbles and it's accompanied by an increase in core reactivity. So when we have the steam bubbles go up, that leads to more fission. So the fission Fission is also going to increase. So as steam production in the fuel channels increases, the neutrons that would have been absorbed by the denser water now produce increased fission in the fuel. So they add power. So when the steam goes up, that means there's more reactivity. The water, in effect, isn't really like cooling it down, so it gets more and more excited. The interaction of the very hot fuel and the cooling water, it'll give you three things. One of those things is, I'm going to put a one there, fuel fragmentation, like the fuel breaks up. Then you get steam, lots and lots of steam really fast, so rapid steam production. And finally, an increase in pressure. And what happens if you fill a balloon up more and more and more and more? Eventually, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop, right? You guys are right. The design characteristics of the reactor were such that substantial damage to even three. So if you have damage to just three or four fuel assemblies, that's going to destroy the reactor. And these things lead to damage. Hot fuel and cool water lead to those damages. So the overpressure caused the 1,000 ton cover. So remember, a ton is, is 2,000 pounds. So 2,000 times 1,000, is that 2 million? 2 million pounds? cause that cover to become partially detached and it ruptured the fuel channels and that was bad because it jammed all the control rods and you remember uh, the control rods when when you put them in they slow the fission rate down because you can only either bring up the fission rate or you can bring it down so it's kind of like taking the brakes off of a really fast car there's not really a way to stop and by that time, they were only halfway down. So we're going to watch an explanation of both of these things. So continuing the why, intense steam generation. and spread throughout the whole core causing a steam explosion. And that was that first explosion. So let's just put a number one beside that. And releasing fission products to the atmosphere, like the xenon gas. Then two to three seconds later, a second explosion throughout fragments from the fuel channels 
Remember that's uranium-235. And hot graphite. There's some dispute among experts about the character of the second explosion, but it's likely to have been caused by the production of hydrogen from zirconium steam reactions. Two workers died as a result of the explosions. And 300 tons of graphite was estimated to have been injected. So that what, 300 times 2,000? Is that 60,000 pounds? and the fuel became incandescent. It started numbers of fires, a number of fires. Um, good question. Emitting a light as a result of being heated. Remember when the graphite glowed? And I think it, it means it's so hot, it's able to start fires. Usually things that light up are hot, right? So, the fuel started fires. And it released radiation, contamination. About two to three hundred tons of water per hour was injected into the half of the reactor using the auxiliary feed water pumps, but this was stopped after half a day to prevent it flowing into and flooding units one and two. Remember, they were still going, the ones nearby. From the second to tenth day after the accident, some 5,000 tons of boron, dolomite, sand, clay, and lead were dropped onto the burning core by a helicopter in an effort to extinguish the blaze and limit the release of radioactive particles. So maybe we should draw a little helicopter. There was boron, dolomite, sand, clay, and lead. <laughs> Five thousand tons is a lot. <clears throat> Yeah. 
The accident caused the largest uncontrolled radioactive release into the environment ever. Recorded for any civilian operation. And large quantities of radioactive substances were released into the air for about 10 days. Phineas, oh, you're stretching. This caused serious social and economic disruption. So social it has to do with people. It affected people. In economic, it affected how they did business and finance. So it affected the way they make money. Disruption for large populations, and it wasn't just in Ukraine, it was Belarus, Russia, and Ukraine. Remember, when we look here, I'm going to go back real quick. Some of you are talking. Please stop. If I go back to the initial picture, remember that Chernobyl's here, right? But it's affecting a lot of people around them. It's not just Chernobyl that's affected. And the closest neighbors are Belarus and Russia. So they're affected as well. <clears throat> Two radionuclides. The short-lived iodine, 131, and long-lived caesium, 137, were particularly significant for the radiation dose they delivered to members of the public. 